Okay, so my guest today is an actor who has done work across television, film and the OTT space and who recently hit it out of the park with the web series Jubilee which is on Amazon Prime Video. And there were moments when I was watching this web series and I just sort of forgot that someone that there's actual acting going on. It was absolutely effortless, flowing and it's a performance that for me lingered long after the credits were over. In short, a tour de force, I thought. Siddhant, a very warm welcome to the show and I've been waiting to have this conversation with you to unpack the magic that you have brought to Jay Khanna and Jubilee and much else. So thank you and a very warm welcome. Thank you so much and thank you for your generosity. Also making me feel like a cricketer when you said you hit it out of the park. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> metaphor is a bit absolutely yeah. <laughs> so Siddharth, I want to sort of I want to start um by talking about from what I what I can gather life hasn't been completely linear for you. And what I mean by that is you your hometown is in Jammu, I believe. You represented Jammu and Kashmir in national under 14 cricket, under 17 swimming and under 19 basketball. And as if that wasn't um sorry. <laughs> yes, I've been I've, I've I don't know. I just feel like I'm like born to play, you know. So uh, I love that. Yeah, I mean, and growing up also it was like more like um just exploring everything uh but not being tied up. You know what I mean? So just like I was just always out there just playing. So uh, but but also I uh, I I believe I, I was good with all these sports like I got into it and I I played a certain league and whatever but I uh I always felt myself shuffling from one thing to another uh yeah and my I remember I had a teacher in my school uh Satinder sir uh amazing human being uh he used you just look at me and you should be like you're like a jack of all trades but like says so some day i will be a master of something hopefully you know that's amazing <laughs> yeah maybe that's why i'm an actor no you got to do like everything sort of sort of sort of play different so siddharth so then i was reading that you actually went to delhi to study for a commercial pilots license and then you said that it was actually my dad who wanted me to become a pilot and not necessarily yourself so i suppose before i ask you you know how you got to doing what you do talk to me a little bit siddhant about the early years you know your relationship with your parents and sort of take us back a little bit i suppose is what i'm saying so yeah i spent all almost all my growing years in jammu um and after i finished schooling is when i left uh the city and then i went to delhi because uh we discussed uh my father and i and i at the time you know that ctl that all uh the becoming a pilot sort of uh, the idea appealed to me because i didn't know what to do with my life and, uh so i just like went for it and while i was studying doing the ground study and i remember i applied to go to canada already uh the admission of a sort i mean the paperwork had begun uh but you know it's like i remember i i met someone in the train uh on my way from jammu to delhi when i was going for my ielts um i i be called ielts i i don't even remember ielts right so uh, i was going for that exam and then i met this person and we just started to talk and uh, about random things in the world and then we i remember we i when we reached delhi he gave me his card and so he was basically the joint commissioner of delhi police uh, at the time and then he invited me home for diwali and i met his wife and his family yeah amazing and then uh, she introduced me to someone she was like why why do you in delhi why don't you also do some modeling meanwhile uh because i think you can and i was like you know with my chest up and like yeah why not <laughs> let's explore it and then i started to explore that world which is sort of uh uh the modeling world you know and it's sort of you know from 
suddenly I'm in magazines and you know suddenly I'm I'm doing some shoots here and there like traveling Bangalore etc and then uh, suddenly I see my posters in uh, Levi's or signature or something some brands oh. and stuff like that yeah I mean initially and then I was like Oh, this seems nice. You know, you just go there and you just pose, and you're suddenly like in a in a store, uh, and everyone just uh, sort of, you know, it seemed like an appealing thing at the time. And then I was like, um, and I don't know how that happened. And I was suddenly I just didn't want to be a pirate because I was like, uh, do I want to like sit in a cockpit all my life, or do I want to like explore more? So I just decided I'll just come to Bombay and become an actor, maybe the next step. Because to be honest, I was wasn't also. enjoying modeling while i was but it wasn't i felt like some sort of a saturation back then jitni samajh thi mujhe mein you know us us waqt tak and then i came to delhi came to came to bombay and then uh, i just i don't know some friend of mine who i randomly met he took me to some audition and he, they were like just give you an intro and you know how that process happens you carry a slate you write your name and etc etc there's a camera you stand and then you just Give your introduction, and then they oh, ask you. You did that, Sidal. I think everyone in this city has done that. It's wow. very normal thing in the city to just go yeah. for an audition, stand in a line of uh, a queue of hundreds, yeah. and then stand, wait for your turn to come. And then when your turn comes, you shit bricks, and sure. then you run away. Yes. Wow. So and so and then I'm, I I don't know I. I was like, "What is this? I can't even open my mouth in front of the camera." You know how? What have I done? I've not gone for my pilot training. Here I am, uh, just randomly. I've just come to become an actor with no rhyme or reason. Just I've just come to become an actor uh, because that seemed like a better next step, uh, going with the flow. So, anyways, those little tidbits of the journey that one lives through, and then I kept running around in uh, life and in sit in the city, uh, chasing everyone. else's dream but mine not not knowing what if this is really my dream you know uh i just sort of i don't know let let life take me where it had to because it presents you with choices at every point and then you have to just keep choosing so i just kept choosing which sort of felt appealing at the moment and but something inside also felt right uh and i just kept walking kept running around in circles and then uh looking for work finding my way here uh asking me the most uh, random questions which probably everyone was asking and no one had an answer to uh eventually it came to a point where i don't know i i did some film when i came to bombay and then a small little film it that released and i That's when you slowly also understand when you come from outside uh, that you know it's how does this really function? You get a film and you feel so happy about it and you do it and it's an experience that that sort of you you learn from you cherish uh, because it's it's actually a great life being an actor. Uh, it's an emotional uh, journey that one uh, sort of holds on to and finds along the way. Um, so as much as the emotions. allowed me to express back then i did and then i kept learning and i kept growing i guess uh i did television which i did for a year which it surely worked and i i it was really nice while i was a part of it uh but after a year i was like i you know i was really like this i had some sort of some sort of feeling that one who wanted me to sort of just move away because it was getting too much uh there was no creativity in the end of it you go in the morning you get your scenes and then there came a point where i'm standing in front of the camera i know my character that i'm playing every day and it's like the lines are also sort of just i'm just reading and just you know just doing that sure i'm not just saying my lines and i'm i am sort of playing the character but then i had to sort of move on uh and find more uh find more to why i'm actually here why i why i if if there is that more that i'm capable of uh which i always felt deep inside uh and that's when i think i wanted to jump from uh television to films and i did a cameo in a film uh which 
wasn't really mine but then you know i mean uh, i just did it because that seemed like the right step back then i did that and then uh when that film came out that's when it was uh, the worst time of my life when i walked away from television and i'm refusing everything that's coming from television and i am here uh at a point where no one in the film fraternity or you know the bigger league wanted to sort of work with me and the only so again like two choices uh either you go back to where you've been or you just uh find more to your belief uh and start asking yourself some questions which uh so it's sort of Uh, seems like a heavy lifting at the time but then it really eventually answers and uh, that opens your life and that the same thing happened to me so i just broke free and i had made some money from television i went to uh, london uh, i did my I, i don't know somehow when you're looking for it life opens up uh, in a way that it, you know you meet people who has who will offer you what you're looking for and that's when i met uh, a faculty from the drama center which is actually one of the best schools uh uh parity thousands and thousands they audition and they only i think only 15 get through just to study in that school wow and somehow i met the faculty and then i really connected with this lady her name is uh, liana and uh 65 year old what her energy was like double than mine oh. it's like how is this possible and she's been a dancer all her life and you know london techniques and i mean I'm not getting into the nitty gritties but i mean it's very external to internal in terms of they really explore their body like a ballet is the root of the craft uh sure. and there is a lot in the body that you explore uh, through those techniques uh and i remember that some sessions with her and she was I mean I know how but she agreed on working with me one on one I went to that school I saw their regime you know I was like wow this world seems so like far fetched but so right in terms of finding more to this work how yeah. people are people are sort of uh sailing through the day uh working on themselves they are doing everything possible like you know from diction to fencing to ballet to dance to movement to improv to everything there is literally like a chain that you know finds them through the day and that's the schedule they follow for 3 years they're not even allowed to audition outside so i was like okay this is amazing because i'm this i think this work if you're really looking at finding this the work that will sort of impact people so many people they watch you when they see your your work through a world that is created by someone where you play a character uh it's the emotions that connect you with the world as an actor it's the emotions that one sort of finds and surrenders to and hopefully they generate in a way where it just creates a connect with the audiences that's the work and i think for that you one needs to really uh find some reasons uh for doing this work which has to like go beyond all the all the reasons on the surface i would say uh yeah. if not frivolous uh so i mean i think that's that is what it required when i did my first session with her that's when i actually felt uh just a few seconds of just forgetting my entire life and that was like the best feeling i've ever felt just forgetting everything every single second of my life that i've lived just for a few seconds of moving around in that studio the whatever she did with me uh her technique and i was like okay there is a reality away from the reality that i have lived which i know of that i just experienced and that's just admitted and something to sort of chase uh yeah. because it feels right and that's what you need to find uh to sort of uh you know uh you find more and more of that and you find and you while you're finding more and more of that because it's so far away from who you've been and who you are it's uh, it's also uh you take baby steps and then you slowly slowly start to build a new world for yourself which is uh just more to the life that you've lived 
and then uh, you just share that through your work. Uh, so I believe I could just think about those things and I uh, somehow could just uh, feel responsible uh, uh, for the work for myself and for people who uh, would watch me as as an actor. If I have something to offer uh, the characters that I'm going to play and if I can really just give everything to those characters. Uh, so yeah, like something to hold on to. Then I went to LA and I was like, because this seems like a nice road to just finding if I really want to do this work all my life, I need to like, you know, just find as much as I can to yeah. uh, eventually offer. Uh, and then I, yeah, and then there comes a time when you, uh, when you just carry everything and just keep finding more and more of the then you don't really, uh, uh, you know, you take everything from people who offer you, you learn from them, who are your teachers, uh, who become your mentors also. Uh, knowing that they're always there for you. So I've formed those connections with them and then I've been on my own journey of self. And it's been nice. It's been, but you know, Siddhant, what's interesting is that as a viewer of like, I'm talking about Jubilee right now, but just listening to you give this backstory gives it so much context in terms of like, I was wondering, this is not somebody with like 35 years of experience behind them to expect a performance like this. Oh. And now you talk about this, you talk about this, this teacher that you met in the UK, for instance, and genuinely listening to you, I feel like that just sounded like a transcendental experience that first time with her that you had, you know, and I feel in some ways you really beautifully manifested it as well, right? And, and how amazing that you decided to go down that path, even though I understand that the modeling and then the acting was incidental in some ways. But you kind yeah. of made that choice, and um, I don't want to sound cheesy, but that was very inspiring. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I've, I think everyone, uh, everyone has a right to sort of uh, make those choices when they're offered. Uh, so I mean, I think it's those little leaps of faith that you sort of need to take uh, in order to just. Uh, know what it feels like taking that leap of faith you know just like going away like just leaving everything and just like going away to just find a reason why i want to do this work what is this work rather than just doing the same thing and just like you know being on the same rut and thing at the pace of the city and how work how work is happening here it really consumes you and it also makes you want to just keep working which is great but uh, to keep working as an actor and where we are, where we should be, where we should must strive to be in terms of uh, the craft and the films and everything, uh, the, the scale, what we're trying to say, the voice, there has to be a consistent finding also that you can offer. Uh, so, I mean, that only comes from absorbing life and that only comes from, I think, breaking free and keeping your eyes and ears open at all times somehow. Yeah. Uh, and also running room. around just, yeah. running yeah. around in this space you just miss out a lot uh and you just you you're you find yourself again you know in a tunnel where you've been and where only where no one is hearing you you know like for a long time i just like i i felt like no one heard me uh even i couldn't hear me you know I, uh, I, I, I reached sort of that place and then I had to find my way through it and then I just uh, kept making some, I just trusted my feelings uh, that sort of, yeah, just found a better dialogue with them, I guess, uh, yeah. at all times. Uh, so life doesn't seem like a burden or a battle. It has yeah. to, it's one life and one needs to value it. What else? Is, not live out loud I guess sure. yeah. yeah yeah and so Siddhant coming to coming to Jubilee I mean I'm like tell us everything and oh, it's interesting but, I would what say you've seen it all <laughs> but just by way of context I was speaking to Vikram Aditya Motwani some time back <laughs> and uh, I remember saying to him that 
And it's so strange to say this to your face, but who else should I say it to? I was telling yeah. him, I said, I said, Vikram, everything about the show was just stellar. And, you know, it leaves this kind of indelible mark and really it's this quietly fierce gem of a series. And I said, everyone's stellar, but Siddharth is operating in this different dimension of extraordinary altogether. And I'm thank so, you. it's so strange to say oh, that because it's like, it sounds like I'm pandering, but I'm just speaking my heart out. Thank and, you. you know, Siddharth, it's sort of the nuances, right? Which I'm sure that a lot of people must have fed this back to you, but um, displaying your empty pockets or snapping your fingers. And then there was, I was also telling Vikram, it was also the silences like some really poetic silences where not everything had to be said. And it just, I, I suppose I felt it was done in this very idiosyncratic way, that someone almost sculpted his character and then made it their own. So what I'm trying to say is there was nothing caricaturish about this. And I think I even said this to Vikram that it was a very tricky terrain, I felt, because if it was more than that, it would have felt outlandish. If it was a little less, it might have felt bland and underwhelming. And I'm like, the word that comes to my mind is balance. And I'm curious to ask you, where did Siddhant find the balance for Jay, for, um, for, for Jay really? I have, I mean, I could go on and on about this, this Please question. Please do. <laughs> that you ask me, but I mean, you know, the simple way I, because I've now lived that character, um, just a, s a simple way to put it across for me is when I look back at it, I I made it about about the character at all times. I didn't make it about me. Uh, it consumed me. I let it consume me uh, in a way where I could just uh, find comfort in and surrender in living what felt real to me which is another character um, and the thing is when when you're playing a life you're also building it up like a voice it builds up in, inside of you and then it finds its way out uh, eventually when the time comes but you keep building you keep finding more and more and more to the nuances so I was like a child who was just like playing with this character that was offered to me and then I, I don't know eventually I just it felt really safe because uh, I knew I was in the right hands. Uh, because he's, he has, not because he's amazing in all of those things, he's because he has the clarity and you feel the intent behind him making uh, a world. And you know that this guy is seeing something, uh, something timeless and real. You know what I mean? Uh, a world which, which, uh, which is worth sort of delving into as even as an audience when you I, I see his all his cinema and all his films that he's made uh, so that felt really safe and then uh, the balance about not going over the top and all of those things comes from comes from that you know when you're when you're exploring when you're now these are this very active language I don't want to like it's it's an unending process but and to each his own uh because i it's like for me it's i i lead with uh some questions that really evoke my curiosity at the same time i also hold on to something that makes me feel responsible uh so i held on to why uh what can i offer through this journey because um I was also sharing my all my emotions that I felt, and that's the most beautiful part because that's the reality that you that you really find uh, the emotional reality of sharing. Uh, because you know, people have. I mean, thank God uh, for this work, being an actor that I've chosen to be. Uh, people. I mean, I look at people, I see people and I'm like, you know, where will they sort of find their release of the life that they've lived and all the scars that they've and the screams that they hear inside that they suppress and, you know, like they run away from and it becomes like 
uh, a whole complex uh, complexity that they carry uh, within uh, not being able to you know speaking about it is one thing but really expressing it through characters is one thing uh, that really kept me going because it all really felt real because i could share my own reality through this at the same time just like you know it's been a journey of me also finding my my way into my work um uh, sure you you deliver a scene you're on set and you're this you know when you're in the moment you just surrender and then that moment is felt by everyone on the set and you know that it will be felt by everyone and so it feels very uh uh it feels like powerful you know what i mean but it also makes you feel really responsible uh because uh it's emotion and emotion are fragile uh everyone is sort of battling through emotions and everyone's like you know how it's this anger this pain this fear and there's also love and there's also laughter and all of them just like uh finding their way into conversations and your moods that you just um uh, carry move around with all day entire day and nothing makes more sense to me but uh this like i mean the, this life is like one big emotion uh which has so many other emotions uh so i wanted to live a, live an emotionally rich life and yeah. here i have a character where i'm i can explore joy and i can share all my pain and fear and all of those things while i'm going on to exploring the joy of making sure that he lives out loud in this world that is offered to me uh it's also the writing uh i have to say uh, atul sabarwal who's written this character I don't know how someone wrote this character which is just so unabashedly just you know uh at all times just fighting for his not after a point doesn't really feel like a fight but you know just fighting for his right to just exist and just see the world with his own eyes finding his own eyes and his own heart to just see what he wants to see rather than consistently seeing what everyone else is seeing uh so it's like a little shuffle that i had to sort of find finding my own world at the same time being in the world where i was living in which is and i had to just find in me to just separate from the world my my life uh every now and then so it became like a little play you know like my uh, my every day like my mother was here i remember and then i was shooting i i never allow my family when i'm shooting i was like stay with <laughs> this is work uh but when i was prepping and she was here and you know i i used to just be aware of when i used to talk to her i would reply like i've always replied but at the same time there's also a voice that is building up which is jack kanal it is like replying like that also you know and <laughs> yeah and it's just becomes like a little game that you play with yourself and you just keep playing that because it's just uh it's fun yeah. uh it's not really confusing it's actually fun yeah uh, yeah that's the fun of this work actually it's just um it's a new direction that you find uh, that you keep finding and so and which where you can just do whatever you want to do yeah. uh you know and you just feel more like yeah. so yeah maybe and was getting out of it hard siddhant like is that a process too or do you feel like that's just to oh yeah so you don't even know when it leaves you until it does you know and but because you've lived a character so closely you still you know that if i'm i'm to explore it again uh that voice is not too far away yeah if you lived it and you know how it feels you know the freedom that it feels uh all the texture that it feels uh so uh yeah this i mean there's a lot like i said i don't know how to ever explain these things i try to share as much as i can because i don't know uh because i feel like i have found it maybe someone else can sort of get something through absolutely um uh, uh and it's all about sharing so we can all i don't know somehow grow together to uh living better and uh playing better characters and uh finding more reality uh yeah so i see it like that yeah So I think I want to talk to you about success, right? And again, a really strange, elusive kind of word because 
I mean, it's fleeting. It comes and goes, but also, what is it? But but just from whatever we understand of the word, I suppose I want to ask you two questions. One of them is that you know it is a bit of a, I would imagine it's a double-edged sword in that of course it feels good, it gives you that high and all of that stuff, and to get that adulation. But then on the other hand, I feel like I would imagine that there are certain dangers or pitfalls to success. such as this rather compelling and addictive quality that it has and you know i mean it in some ways can really feel like how should i say it, like the antidote to staying grounded because you're itne log itni whatever inevitably being human there is a way of getting roped into it and getting drawn into it and all of that stuff um talk to me first a little bit about you know i mean are you are you at all intentional um you know given everything that i've read and everything you've said are you intentional about not succumbing to some of those things that come with success because again the industry is fraught with you know kind of turbulence rejection whatever that might say and that might be it's not linear in that sense so talk to yeah. me a little bit about how you you how you're processing all of this i am only looking for honestly uh a story a character that wouldn't leave me easy and it's the it's actually when you read the script the reason for doing it has to sort of unfold uh rather than you just finding reasons ki stay kar leta hu stay kar leta hu ki abhi success hai to abhi kaam hai isi ke liye to itni der se kaam kiya hai you know uh aur abhi opportunities aa rahi hain to le leta hu but the thing is if that opportunity uh doesn't speak to your heart uh then you just also uh you know it took me a long time to find the right intention to do this work and perhaps why i want to like give it everything that i have uh to a character that i play and to a story that i'm living uh I don't want to take that reason away from myself. I don't want to like it feels like, you know, what I mean. Uh so I'm just literally I'm just going with the flow, uh believing that there's something uh something that's for that is for me will find me like like to bleed and also um uh, uh I just finished uh, not too long ago I finished a short film. Um that story like how it found me also made me believe in the reason that okay this seems right that stories will find me uh the ones that i i can say uh in fact i want to feel that i'm the only one who can say this story this it has to feel as strong to sort of be able to just uh i don't know then you ask why are you really you know working i really stick with this question why i am doing this work why am i doing this work because it's i just feel i'm doing this work because i have a lot to share uh but i can only share with through characters where i feel i can find that space uh to share you know and uh what is that character saying or what is the story saying if i can find enough to say through that character find enough to just give to that character rather than just doing a film and just you know it'll release and people will see it and sure uh but something has to stay even if it's like and it's not about the genre it's about it's about like for example jubilee jack and another i the character that i played i i could bring in all the layers of a uh, laughter and joy and also all the heavy emotions were also short so the thing is because it gave me a lot of space to play uh it was a it was layered uh it was thought through it came from uh, from you know an honest place from through the writer and the world through the director uh so i could bring in my honesty uh to just create reality end of the day it's a reality that people feel want to feel through this work uh so yeah i mean i just so i'm just at it finding my way yeah yeah and that certainly came through i think the layers just the fact that it didn't shy away from complicating and from just um really not trying to give you these 
thick cookie cutter kind of blogs. That was that was one of the big highs of it. Yeah, but I'm reading stuff, and I'm like, there are there are things that are appealing to me. So uh, it's there is there is content, but the really good content is very uh, wow. also very limited. You know, yeah, uh, so you have to just be patient enough to just let it find you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I love what you said about not sort of jumping on the bandwagon to say, "Abi, bahut," you know, like I've got wind in my sails, so this is the time, and just anything will land, you know. But rather, still being a yeah. little more intentional. Yeah, I'm, I'm very like one, hopefully one project at a time person. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and so I don't want to like go out there and like sign three films. Uh, yeah. So I don't want to do that to myself. Yeah. Because I like the little breathing space. For myself, sure. yeah, uh, two things. Yeah, yeah. Sudhant, I, I, re- I was, I want to talk to you about finding your flow. It's something that you know you've mentioned elsewhere, but even now, everything you've been saying. And I read something you said which really resonated with me, as I'm sure it did with other people. It was something like, you said, if you go outside, you see people are just walking on autopilot. Everyone's running. Everyone's in a rush. They just want to reach the destination. कोई जल्दी भी नहीं है, because सब को जल्दी है सड़क पे तो उनको भी है. So it's just noise. And you know, this just really, it really, it really landed with me. And because you've also spoken about finding your flow, which is a concept that I often think about. I'm currently reading this book called, you know, on the Japanese concept of ikigai, which is very similar and yeah. awesome, right. So. Talk to us a little bit about doing that inner work. You know about finding your flow, and as you've said, the magic of a pause, despite a very cacophonous surround sound. In a sense, you know, it's I'm sure it's not easy. But how does one really then look inwards and try and harmonize with the chorus within yourself, rather than just, you know, kind of rushing and using being busy as a badge of honor or kind of feeling that pressure. I think to each his own. We are uh, we are made differently. I feel everyone has a certain gift that one needs to explore. A certain that comes from believing in the reason of uh, there is one. Uh, you know, and only then you can find when you believe in the reason that reason of just. I feel uh, these are little bigger questions, and you know, little uh, in the. Philosophical, maybe, but then relevant in times now because everyone is just sort of um, like you see around, just like you know, with their eyes closed and just running uh, on an autopilot uh, until they stop and they want to just run again on autopilot. Uh, I think the ones who are finding more and more within them, like something to say, uh, are the ones who are sort of. Finding because end of the day you need an intention to keep your eyes open. Otherwise, you don't know what to see. You'll only see what everyone else is seeing. Like I was for a long, long time. Uh, you know, suffering between uh, I don't know how to explain these things, but suffering between like fear and pain, your head and your heart. It's just uh, you feel and you feel trapped and you feel burdened and you feel all of those things and then you start to just blame. Everyone, for everything but yourself. Uh, no, and the thing is, one doesn't need. Sorry, one doesn't need to even blame. You know, uh, but blame for what? Uh, I think what I ask myself is, how do I accept everything? How do I accept the day? It's a simple question. How do I ex- accept the day when I'm working? Well, uh, how do I accept the day when I'm not working? How do I accept the day when I'm out there looking at all the people who are not even seeing people as people? Uh, because I don't know if they if they know how to see someone as just hopeful, uh, hopeful of just uh, I don't know. Because they don't know how that other someone is going to see you. Because end of the day, we believe it. We admit it to ourselves or not. Sure, we are this. We have this shield uh, that we create to just be out there, and it's a voice and all of those personas, etc. But end of the day, we also are human beings, and we have emotions inside. You know, we would like someone to just 
through the day when you just like go outside just like have an exchange which is very human uh so i think it only comes with acceptance uh and it comes from the fact that one we're all sharing uh you know sharing the world anyway so many people so many of us uh why not accept just accept everyone and just like uh, be a little empathetic towards the world and people who are struggling uh and so i mean that that's why perhaps i feel one needs to find more and more to share that's the only thing uh you know and today you were sure you're being a part of so many stories i also feel i'm creating my own story here uh you know that if and how do you know it's a story worth living when it's worth sharing with others is when you know that it's worth living uh why i'm just like trying to find my present approach trying to just be uh, alive and not just lost in thoughts at all times yeah yeah yeah. yeah and that sort of is a nice segue sidant into talking about social media right it's kind of hard not for that not to bring that up yeah social media <laughs> yes all right <laughs> <laughs> I mean I want to of course ask you your own relationship with it but in addition to that I also want to say that you know it seems to have of course it's got huge advantages and those are undeniable but it also has this complicated and pretty sort of precarious relationship with you know our mental health with competition whether one admits it or not but also recently may they create that you know there's this I not to throw in another buzzword but also this idea of like toxic positivity you know and what i mean by that is so on the one hand we know that looking at other people's stuff can have this knock on effect of inadequacy or whatever that might be right like feeling like oh my god i'm just not good enough or xyz is doing this traveling at joby which is that's just human i suppose but then the other thing that i've really been seeing is this sense of good vibes only presenting the best version of yourself like just happiness on steroids you know and 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 many of us obviously in some ways are doing that so i would ask you kind of how you strike any sort of equilibrium ki aap uthe to aapki pehli 10 cheeze ye na ho ke you know which are which consume you and are only related to social media um and and also as somebody who does this inner work work like i'm curious to ask you how do you think about vulnerability like is it okay to say it wasn't 100% today you know and everything doesn't ha- will not be pitch perfect talk to me a little bit about social media and about just vulnerability and embracing that you know while uh while sure there is a question that people are on social media all day every day the day begins like that and you know every time they open their phone there is this instagram icon that they click on and then before they uh you know for the that button that they press uh, lock the screen there is always that you know it's become like a thing uh while there are all these factors which i feel people should be aware about because that's not a good thing uh that's again a, a new autopilot i feel people have found you know you don't even know but just like so that's the thing i mean if you if one is really aware of these autopilots that you apne aap kaise hoti hai cheeze you know main chalta hu to chalta hi ja raha hu main फोन खोल रहा हूँ तो अपने आप इंस्टाग्राम तो बटन दब रहा है अपने आप कैसे हो रहे हैं यू नो इट्स लाइक जस्ट प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर people are now sort of striving for a voice uh you know so it's it's giving them an a space to sort of explore and just find more to who you are like for me i social media is finding more to who i am so i can just share more through my social media more to who i actually can, i can find that feels like okay this feels like it's worth Uh, putting out there and eventually finding my own way to just uh, so it also gives you a lot because it gives you this need and strive because it's it's a relevant platform these days uh, 
uh, and it's relevant for a reason. It also connects you with the whole world and what's going on, etc., etc. So I mean, with me, I'm like also exploring like more to what fashion means uh, and something that I want to say once in a while that impulsively just you know I just sort of put out. Uh, something that I want to write and just put out uh, all my so the thoughts the thoughts and uh, different aspect aspects that I've that I can find more uh, which I can share through this platform and I just do that and I see see a lot of people doing that uh, end of the day it's also what every time I I am on social media which I I try uh, <laughs> refrain uh, from you know I try to refrain from just being so avidly on social media. Yeah. So I just take my breaks for a few days and I come back and I take my breaks for a few days. That's that's me. Uh, but uh, every time I come, I also while I'm seeing a lot of trash. Uh, I but I also see I try to see something in there. You know, it's like uh, if you can just. Even in uh, something that feels uh, rubbish to you doesn't mean it's rubbish for another person. That person is just trying to be and you know, just trying to sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, just just trying to say something. Uh, if it's not for you, then it's not for you. So it's, I'm, I, I, try, I try to also uh, think about these things, uh, not going on an autopilot, just post, 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 off, phone. So I'd rather if I'm looking at something, then I just look at something, and then I find something that that I actually was looking for. It finds you, uh, someone or something to say across the world. Uh, suddenly, a video will pop up, and I would uh, listen to it. And I like the fact that the world is actually going into that direction where people are suddenly uh, more open to just hearing what people have, what everyone has to say. People who are actually sort of uh, making their way um, not really up, but uh, you know, just uh, in their own respective fields, they are just uh, they they are earning respect and they have something to say because there's a reason that they're finding that channel for themselves and so, and people want everyone wants to share. Uh, suddenly, you go on Instagram and you suddenly like I I see. Shah Rukh Khan's old videos popping, where he's really saying a lot of facts, which he said, which he has said ten years ago, and right, it's now is the time when those videos are actually popping up. If you look at it, no one spoke about it ten years ago. No, the, these videos weren't floating on Instagram ten years ago. But right now, because uh, he had something to say, which is even relevant now, so he he, he really. So that's the thing. I think that's a nice thing about social media now, where where you just find people sharing more than they uh, more than I don't know more to their individual voices, which will help many other individual voices. Uh, because end of the day, one needs to feel enough with themselves, uh, you know, in this life that one is living. Uh, we. And we are. I feel I have lived a life where I have felt dependent on many others, uh, just because I didn't feel enough. Um, so the thing is, one needs to really. It's all about feeling enough within, and that's an individual voice that one needs to find. Uh, what is that enough? It's a feeling. Uh, it's a feeling that you eventually trust and build to. Uh, to just walk free, uh, you know. And yeah, and then life happens on its own. It seems beautiful. It's all, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that community aspect is one hundred percent, very much. Huh. Yeah. Sidan, do you do you did you read as a child? Do you enjoy reading? Is that something? No, that's... I can't read. That's a thing. Really? Okay. I have my iPad right now placed on three books which I haven't read. Just to get some <laughs> Yeah, so you like the buy? <laughs> I like I like reading scripts. I like uh, I don't know. I actually I know for some reason I like to write more than I like to read. Uh, yeah, talk about that listen. a little. About what? I just I don't know. At times I just when I have a clear mind, I like my thoughts and I just put it 
down uh, in my journal and that helps build uh, build building my voice uh you know uh yeah and it's it's a nice feeling to feel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so that have there been like not necessarily role models but have there been people along the way that or or do they continue to be who you feel inspired by or sort of you know even when you were making that decision to say um you know go to the uk or all of that like when at, at inception and subsequently aise aise log hain you know what appealed to me was actually uh you know at the time i didn't know to be honest i didn't know all i knew was that i this one question i kept asking myself uh when it comes to the craft uh when it comes to this work uh when you're called when you're on this path of calling yourself an actor uh i used to i used to watch films uh here and also across the globe and i used to say to myself uh what is this thing that happens where i'm watching a film and i'm like you know there's this feeling that you that you feel which is so real through a person yeah. uh, uh and i used to just ask myself i've seen 20 i can name 20 25 actors right now who are like doing that translating that that magic of a sort through their work uh in the globe and here i've always felt there are at, there are some brilliant actors uh but at the same time i've always felt i don't know i can bring more here more of that more of i don't know what that more is it's it's that more that i felt every time i used to see a nice performance uh and what they are saying through that performance which is not just what's written it's actually more than what's written uh it's more to the, again uh you know finding the right choices in in the journey of playing a character in the scenes uh and just because you're finding the right choices just a little more of a little more it's like you'd see Meryl Streep perform and the thing is uh, what i used to think what separates her from the world uh what is it because she it's like she it's the little things it's uh it's the little choices that are you that you know are not in the script they're just happening while the take is going on so it's it's that space i was like okay i i this is this seems right this seems like i don't want to go away from this person that i'm seeing and i'm just here stuck with this person and this person unknowingly is just giving me so much yeah. uh making me smile making me cry and all of those things uh which i just do, cannot question because it's the truth that i'm seeing from the get go uh so i was like is it possible to generate that truth throughout the film because it's shot in intervals that's the tech that's where i think the technique of this craft comes into place uh i think finding reality and finding intention they just go hand in hand and you just like sort of uh, uh that that reaches its own again like i said but uh it's just so much to this work that one can just like keep finding Um, yeah, it gives you so much. And it's amazing how that translates then, right? Because I imagine it's, that's how you approached Jay Khanna's role. Is you know? Yeah, I mean, the idea is to actually just chase reality at all times uh, through this character. So when you were talking about that whole caricature shouldn't be over the top, etc., etc., you keep playing as that character. You keep daydreaming as that character, and. you know when the play is real and when it's not you just honest to yourself and there is no right or wrong uh it's just uh if it it has to feel right when you're just playing you know you just do like i i don't know the little gestures and all of all of that that just sort of i i i could find because i just kept playing yeah. uh i didn't stop myself from playing and while you're playing it's like you know which strokes are are yours yeah. you know uh 
Yeah. And did you feel that while whilst you were doing it? Did you get that sense? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's like you know, uh, since you made me feel like a cricketer, uh, <laughs> it's like you know someone doing like a cover, right? It's a feeling that he feels. You see that shot every now and then. The batsman play that shot. It's like you know, it's the same flow and same stance that one finds the moment the delivery comes in that direction. Uh, you know, and it's very smooth to look at. Looking at a cover drive that someone plays or whatever shot someone plays, yes. you know. So, and the thing is, it's the same with the gestures. It's like you keep playing and you find that that one that just comes, you know, every time uh, you find the space to just like just pull off that cover drive. I don't know how else to explain it. So yeah, yeah. so it's that. It's it's fun. Yeah. Mm. Siddharth, I know I've taken up more time than I promised I would. Oh, so, <laughs> it's also taken longer than expected. I'm really I apologize for that. No, uh, not at all. You should not be apologizing at all. Why are you apologizing? Because uh, it took longer than unexpected. I'm sorry for that. No, I'm thrilled about that, but I'm also cognizant that, of course, you've got things to do. But I had two last questions, Siddharth. One was that. How is the family reacted to all of this? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Oh, they don't know how to react still. They, <laughs> they, I'm like, don't react, don't huh. react, just don't say anything. I can feel it. Don't ruin it. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> you know? Are they, they back? Know. Are they in Jammu or are they are they with you? Uh they're back in Jammu, and yeah. But the nice thing is, like, my you know, my my mom, she has a business and she has some clients here and there, and also like some people from France, they're calling her, so she feels all thrilled, like people from oh another God. country are sort of calling her, and so you know, it's as a parent, they're also and as my closest friends that I have, it's like, and I feel like they're all also living this dream that I'm living, I've been living with me, you know, so. Uh, Oh, that yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice feeling. And you keep going yeah. back? Do you go back and visit? Yeah, often? Once in six months or a year, I think. But they also keep coming. They do, yeah. 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 It's amazing. So yeah. that's the final question. I, so I was telling you that I work at NYU. And, um, you know, a few years ago, we had a guest speaker here. And he was talking to our undergraduate students about sort of you know, a lot of what we've spoken about in terms of doing some inner work about mindfulness, about kind of just the present in a sense, yeah. you know, being immersed in the moment sort of thing. And he shared a quote with them. It's a quote by Sir Henry David Thoreau, but it's a kind of a mashed up version of it. It's not the complete original. And I want to share that quote with you. And it's but something please. that, <laughs> sorry, say it again. Please do. <laughs> it's something that really, really stuck with me, Siddharth, I remember, not that this is about me, but I had just given birth to, you know, our second daughter at that time. And I heard this quote and it's something that this quote, I was saying this whole sort of meandering story to you because I was even then, obviously, you know, as a new mother, I was in this headspace of, of you know, just oscillating between a million things and things like that. And this quote, so I want to share it with you. It said something, Siddharth, like, most men and women lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. So he said, most men and women lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. And he asked the students, he said, what's your song? Like take five minutes and scribble your song on a piece of paper and share it with the person sitting next to you. And I guess I just want to end by asking you, Siddhant, that, you know, have there been moments of quiet desperation? And at this point, what seems like kind of the unearthing of your song or songs or whatever one might call it? Huh. This is this is a beautiful quote. Uh, and but I, I just heard it. And the first thing that came to my mind was actually uh, there has been uh, the quiet desperation that I held on to when I was uh, when I didn't know why, why I was I was doing what I was doing. Uh, so the quiet desperation was quiet because uh, I didn't know what it was. Uh, I think when my desperation changed uh, into intention, 
uh, that's when I'm. I felt like I'm not wired anymore. That's when I felt uh, I have something to say. Yeah. So it's just music and mu. I feel like at times like it's like it's musical inside. Uh, yeah, you know. So that's a nice feeling to feel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I, like I said, I, I write. So it's it's not a song that sort of I sing that is. Uh, there are songs that I love, of course, uh, but uh, music is music is an integral part of me. Even when, like playing characters, I have my my music for some reason uh, for the space that I want to enter. Um, but lately, I've just been exploring more to music, uh, and it feels nice. I've, uh, so it's my own song that I'm writing that's playing in my head at the moment. Uh, uh yeah it's about love that i've written it's a language of love uh it's easy breezy and it belongs love is in the air right so it's like uh something on the lines of uh, uh i feel so close so close every time we touch hope shines like i'm filled with butterflies it has to be love oh this is love it's sensational it has to be love the flicker of the light or light every time I close my eyes, like the sound of wind chimes, and my heart breathes peace unto me. Oh, this is love! It's sensational. It has to be love. Something like that. Uh, it's my own songs, and I'm finding that sort of uh, keeps me in a beautiful space that I sing myself. And someday out there, I guess I don't know. I love that, Sidan. That is beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't realize you write music as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I write at times, and something feels like music, so it becomes music. Yeah, oh, yeah. And you said there's music inside, and I feel like I'm definitely going to be using that line when I feel uh-huh. like. Oh yeah, cool. I guess we all have music inside. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. Well, well, thanks is- to you for asking me such deep. Deep diving, scuba diving questions. <laughs> I love that analogy. <laughs> and you know, it's okay, so interesting okay. because I I was talking. I had Nandita Das on the podcast before you, and she said something that that really reminds me of this conversation with you. She said that you know she ended with saying something like you know jisse milo achhe se milo aur puri tarah milo, and you know Sidan, that is genuinely you like. I mean, again, strange to say this to you, but it might not seem like a big deal. But you seem like an amazing listener, incredibly oh. humble, and you don't have to be. I think it's when people have success and power that that real test comes in, right? And I just, I'm so blown away by that. I mean, I was by Jay Khanna anyway, but this is a bit uh-huh. like who? Thank you. You're so kind, but I, how else do I be? Sidan, allow me to just um, allow me to disrupt that thought and say that that is very much, at least in my experience. Shayad me galat logon se mil rahi hu, but that's oh. very much the exception rather than the rule. And oh, thank uh, you. No, it's too really, too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just thank you for making this so effortless and not sort of coming at it from this power drive, I suppose. And. Oh. This has been a joy. It's been a gift. Thank you. Oh no, thank you. Not really. Thank you. It's your question which I just which made me delve into uh, just being, you know, being open. So thank it you. Is, it is also very much the human being that you are, and um, thank, you. Yeah, thank you, Sidan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh no. Oh, you, you. <laughs> I think I pressed pause while you no, were. Oh, I was just saying. I was just finding words to say bye to you. It's like it was. It was delightful speaking with you, and uh, I hope you have a lovely life with everything that you're doing, uh, and you keep finding more and more uh, people who you can uh, have these conversations with, which has something to offer to other people, which who are who will uh, hopefully watch you. Uh, that's all nice. Thank you.